Welcome back to the Toronto Blue Jays Sim and played on Out of the Park Baseball 21. I am Jay Blue, and uh, you can find me at Blue Jays From Away on Twitter and uh, www.bluejaysfromaway.com. That's our website. And uh, thanks to GM Games for having us here. So let's get underway. We had a pretty strong week. We went four and two, um, starting with a one a five to one loss to the. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays, who are leading the division, you can see they've got a 54 and 20 record here. Um, that's a pretty good record, so we took that loss. We didn't expect to do very much against those Tampa Bay Rays, um, and you can see we just got one hit for the whole club in this game in this 5-1 loss. Uh, Tanner Roark didn't do badly, five innings, three runs. Anthony Bass back on the major league team, and uh, Shun Yamaguchi, Ken Giles finished it off. So that wasn't much to write home about, but this game was much better. We got a very strong game here. Rowdy Telez and Vladdy Guerrero with home runs. Uh, Derek Fisher, sorry, yeah, Rowdy Telez, Derek Fisher and Vladdy Guerrero with home runs. Telez was two for four. Fisher was two for three. Uh, Fisher also stole a base, and Nate Pearson was on the mound. Not the best start for Nate. Four runs in five innings, seven hits, two walks, four strikeouts, but he did get the win. Wilmer Font was really strong out of the bullpen with five. Five strikeouts there in two and two thirds, and Ken Giles with his 16th save of the year. Derek Fisher was our player of the game for that one, and we won the series against the Tampa Bay Rays with a five to one win in the rubber match. Uh, Vladdy Guerrero went deep; he hit his 20th of the year, so that's a, a nice milestone there for Vladdy. Vladdy was two for two; he's now hitting 295 with 20 home runs, 58 RBI. Uh, Kevin Biggio, a couple hits here, and Travis Shaw with another home run. Matt Shoemaker showing his colors here. Really strong start here. Um, really starting to turn around his season. And uh, this is his only start of the week. Seven and a third inning, seven hits, one run, eight strikeouts against a first place team. So that's pretty impressive for Shoemaker. We went on to face the Pittsburgh Pirates in Pittsburgh. And uh, we started with a really great offensive game, winning 11 to 5. Uh, home runs from Fisher, Bichette, Shaw. Uh, Fisher and Bichette, two hits each. Guerrero with a couple hits. Travis Shaw and Lourdes Guriel with three hits each. Really strong offensive game overall. Anthony Kay was on the mound. Not the best outing for him. Just four innings, three runs allowed. But Trent Thornton was solid. Uh, two innings, one run. Ryan Brucky, two innings, one run, two strikeouts. And Shun Yamaguchi hasn't given up a home run yet this sim. Uh, we lost the second game of the week, a 2-1 pitcher's duel. Uh, really couldn't solve Chris Stratton here for the Pirates. Trent Thornton took the loss. Um, you can see here Stratton, six innings, three hits, three walks. Phillies and Birdie finished it off for them. But for us, Hyunjin Ryu and the biggest... Um, you know, he was strong in his outing, but the biggest news is that he was injured while pitching and is gone for two months. Now, the Blue Jays knew that Ryu had a ha uh, injury history, and, you know, it's almost a matter of when the ball was going to drop as opposed to if the ball was going to drop. Uh, Thornton and Dolis with some solid work out of the pen, but Thornton what did take the loss. Uh, again, just about four hits here. One for Guerrero, Guriel, Biggio, and Ryu actually had a hit in this game. And our last game of the week, a 7-0 win against the Pirates. Uh, Vladdy Guerrero continues to be hot. He is, he is smoking hot. 3 for 5 in this one. Derek Fisher, 3 for 4. He's also smoking hot. Um, they both hit doubles. Travis Shaw hit another home run. Um, this is third of the week, I think. It was a solo shot. His only hit of the game. So, you know, really nice game here for most of these guys especially Guerrero and Fisher uh, Rourke with a really surprising outing seven and two-thirds innings five hits just one walk and four strikeouts for the win uh, that's really nice to see and uh, Wilmer Font finished it off so that was the week that was for the Blue Jays let's now go down to the minor leagues and uh, really check out see what was happening for these teams and here was the biggest surprise Buffalo has been scuffling and they won 
every single game of the week. And because we're, we're starting to get into more teams that we're dealing with, uh, I'm not going to go over every game. But we got a big week from Jacob Waggispack, Patrick Kivlahan, um, Andy Burns had a big week, Anthony Alford, and Santiago Espinal. Those guys were the highlights. This first game, not much happened. Thomas Pannone actually was injured, but he comes back later in the week. He was okay. Um, the next one was a 9-2 to win. Big game from Santiago Espinal. Four hits here. Kiv Lahan had a home run. Andy Burns had three hits. Really strong game. On the mound, James Dykstra with a solid outing. A 10-3 to win against uh, Scranton Wilkesbury. They're the Yankees uh, AAA affiliate. Uh, Patrick Kiv Lahan, another Big game with a home run. Uh, I think that's two consecutive games now. Andy Burns, four for five here. That's pretty spectacular. Curtis Taylor got the start. I think he's going to have to move back into the bullpen. I just don't think he's got the stamina to really be a starter. Uh, two nothing win. We got a shutout. Waggus back here. He was the stud in this one. Six strikeouts. He's actually been moved back up to Toronto. Uh, we He came up with the injury to Ryu. Uh, Andy Burns hit a triple. That was the only extra base hit in that one. Uh, seven to one win. Uh, Kivlahan again with a home run. Uh, sorry, no home run, but two hits. Uh, Andy Burns did hit a home run. Anthony Alford was two for three with home run. And another seven runs in this one. Uh, Thomas Pannone returns. Connor Fisk seven strikeouts and two and two thirds. So that's pretty great for him. Uh, on the offensive side. We had two doubles each from McKinney and Espinal. Espinal three for five, McKinney three for four, Kivlahan two for five. So that, again, big week for Patrick Kivlahan. And an eight to four win against these guys. Dykstra, not a great outing. Um, Saucedo, the bullpen really pulled it together. Um, home run here from Alford. Nash Knight hit his first of the year. So Alford, two walks and a home run. Not bad a game at all. Kivlahan with a double. So that was Buffalo's week. Let's look at New Hampshire. New Hampshire, we had a 4-2 and two week here against Akron. We had an Akron is the double-A club for the Cleveland Indians. Um, not a lot of offense per se. Three hits from Logan Warmoth, so that's nice to see. Kevin Vicuña hit a home run. Brock Lundquist also went deep. Uh, Sean Weimer... He's sort of settling back to earth. Five innings, four runs. Jake Fishman got hit a little bit, and Zach Logue finished it off. A 12-7 to win, also against Akron. Um, Alejandro Kirk with his eighth home run of the year. He had three walks in addition to that home run. Um, so again, Kirk is really driving that offense. He's, he's not doing it in a loud way. His average is only 246, but he's taking a lot of walks, and he is hitting for a lot of extra base power. Uh, Palacios, Guerrero, uh, Smith, two hits each. Demi Ormoloy, two hits. Vinny Capra, two hits. So pretty good all-around game for the offense here. Uh, Andrew Sopko, okay start. And uh, Castillo got hit hard. Zach Logue finished it off again, second time in a row. Here in this game, just five hits. No doubles from anybody. Not an impressive game on the offensive side. Patrick Murphy took the loss. Just two runs in four and two-thirds, but he walked four, struck out five. John Harris, two innings, one run, and Brad Wilson finished it off without giving up a run. A 5-1 to one loss to Trenton. They're the Yankees' double-A squad, and six hits, just one double. That was for Ryan Noda, who also took a walk. And again, Noda's still struggling down here at 164. Josh Winkowski gave up four runs in four and two-thirds innings. Uh, Justin Dillon, a solid outing. And Danny Jimenez, uh, he's back, and he had a scoreless inning. Then another win, a 2 nothing win against the, the Thunder. Vicuña, a couple more hits. And he had a triple in there, and Logan Warmoth with a double. Joey Murray with probably the best pitching outing for a Fisher Cat this week. Six and two-thirds, two hits, four walks, and nine strikeouts. And again, Danny, Danny Jimenez gets the save, uh, his first of the year, with two strikeouts. And finally, a big loss here to the Thunder, 12-4. to four. Uh, Alejandro Kirk with a big game, two hits, including a double. And Josh Palacios hit a home run, a solo shot. Gabby Guerrero, two for three. On the mound, Sean Weimer took a lot of the damage. So did Maximo Castillo and Zach Lowe gave up a couple runs. 
And we go down to the Dunedin Blue Jays. Dunedin Blue Jays with a five and two week. I'm not going to go through every game here, but we had a solid game from Luciano, Elvis Luciano, who's been very strong since he returned from uh, New Hampshire. Nine strikeouts for him in four and two thirds. Alec Manoa had a strong game, five and a third innings, three hits, four walks, two strikeouts. And Simeon Woods Richardson had one great game. I think he started the first game of the, the week here. Yeah, he uh, struck out six and seven innings, just one earned run over that time. But he um, left his second game early with uh, elbow inflammation. I think that was this game here. Nope, that's Justin Maiesi. Maiesi also had a great week, by the way. Um, he had two really good starts. <clears throat> this is the Woods Richardson. Uh, you can see he went four innings, struck out seven, but he was injured. He's gone for six weeks. So offensively, Jake Broat had, had a really strong week. He uh, hit a home run in the first game of the week here with his sixth of the year. Uh, driving in four runs. You can also see Nick Podkul drove in four runs in that game. And he had another home run in the next game, driving in four runs. That was a grand slam. In fact, Jake Broat did not hit two grand slams two days in a row. Um, Podkul also had a strong week and 6 nothing win here. Um, Podkul had a double. Uh, and this was Alec Manoa's start. All right, let's go to the Lansing Lugnuts. They were four and three this week, so not a great week. We had the return of uh, Cameron Eden, and I think he returns a little later in the week. This is the first game. Uh, as you can see, Trevor Schwecki just got off to a phenomenal start. He was three for four. He had a two for three game. He had another three for four game later in the week. And in this week, I think he did hit his first home run of the season. Uh, maybe that was last week. But as you can see with Trevor Schwecki's stats so far, three, he's only been up for 13 games, but 364, 500 OBP, and 477 slugging percentage. For the pitching staff, Jared DeCessory had a good start. But I think his next start was not good. And that might be here. Yeah, four and a third, four runs. The bullpen really bailed him out, but um, he didn't have a great uh, week. Oh, I mean, he had one great start, one not so great start. Um, Adam Kloffenstein didn't have a great start. Uh, Juan Nunez did. Let me see if we can find that for you. I think that's this game. And here you can see Cameron Eden's back and back to his old ways. Two hits there. Um, Jesus Lopez keeps keeps swinging the bat well. I mean, he's up to 333 with his batting average. Um, he may get a promotion soon. So here's Juan Nunez. Five innings, six hits, one run, two walks, seven strikeouts. So a really nice game there for Nunez. And Schwecky, this was his other three for four game. Three RBI, double, and uh, he was player of the game. Now, the Vancouver Canadians got their season underway, and they made a big statement here um, in their first game with Nick Gonzalez, our first round pick in his first professional game, going three for four with a double. Scotty Bradley has been a, a really nice addition here. He was two for four with a double, three RBI. Um, Justin Ammons, a guy who I saw playing last year in Bluefield, two for four. He was a non-drafted free agent, so really nice guy to keep an eye on. Antonio Saldana, he was one of our draft picks this year. Um, he went four and two thirds, gave up two runs. Andrew McInvale, a draft pick last year, solid outing for him, no hits, two walks, one run, three strikeouts, and three and a third. Uh, the second game was not as pretty. It was a 9-8 loss in 16 innings to the Eugene Emeralds. Um, our team, uh, we have Philip Clark, uh, had five hits and seven at bat, so that's pretty outstanding. Uh, added a walk. Uh, Deferson Barreto hit a home run, was one for four coming into the game. Nick Gonzalez, three for eight, so another three-hit game for him, and he had a double as well. Patrick Morris with a, with a triple. And he was three for eight as well. Scotty Bradley here is three for seven. He didn't play a lot last year. He was with Bluefield. Uh, he's a guy who was drafted uh, mostly as a right fielder, outfielder, uh, first baseman. But he was also sort of training to be a catcher. Uh, and he told me in an interview I did with him, which you can find at Blue Jays from Away in the podcast section, 
Um, he told me that uh, they were sort of holding him out of games defensively, mostly, and uh, and really having him work on his catching. Um, on the mound, it was kind of a big mess here with a ton of pitchers. Sam Ryan didn't last very long. Uh, Joel Concepcion, I think, is a guy who I've seen. I think he has more... Um, more upside in real life than he does in this game. Um, he throws much harder than 91 to 93 in real life. I'd say this stuff is probably about a 50-55 potential. Um, really solid prospect that uh, he's really gone under the radar. Austin Havacost has a great hammer, a great curveball that I saw from him last year in Bluefield. Um, and the other guy to really log some innings here is Colton Laws, who has really struggled with injury. Uh, in the last couple of years. <laughs> and a one nothing win in the second in the third game. Um, Nick Gonzalez, another two hits. Yeah, he's just becoming a, a doubles monster with uh, his third of the year. Davis Schneider, two for two. He's a good kid. I interviewed him last year when he was with the Bluefield Blue Jays, and uh, he's off to a nice start to the season as well. Gabriel Ponce, really beautiful start here. Seven innings, one hit, three walks, seven strikeouts. Really nice there for Gabriel Ponce, who was with Vancouver last year. And another eight to three win. So really great start here for the uh, for the Vancouver Canadians. Philip Clark, two for four with a double, two RBI. Scotty Bradley, another couple RBI. Um, two for three here for Davis Schneider. And a six to five win in the final game of the week. Nick Gonzalez had a hit. Scotty Bradley had a triple and a home run, going two for two with two walks. Davis Schneider, one for four. Ryan Sloniger got into the game with two RBI there on a double. Miguel Geraldo, I think that was his first game of the year. He was out with the flu. So Miguel Geraldo makes his debut and goes one for three with two RBI. So that was the week. And the pitching side, Jimmy Robbins, okay start here for him. Colton Laws and uh, Felipe Castaneda got into the game. And the final team we just want to take a quick peek in on are the DSL Blue Jays. And the DSL Blue Jays won two out of seven games. Um, the real guys that we want to take a look at, and again, there aren't a lot of super prospects on this club, but there are two that we're going to really keep an eye on more than others. Uh, why are we not getting any batting stats? Because it's telling us majors. Um, this is one of the things. Sometimes it'll just give you... Um, It'll give you some really weird things just by setting the stats to the wrong scope. So sometimes you got to make sure you're looking at all of these, uh, you know, the, uh, the what it tells you about, you know, it's all batters, all levels, um, 29 players, and make sure that the scope is set to what you want to see, the split is set to what you want to see, etc. Um, so this team, we've got um, Jose Ferrer is getting most of the catching duties. He's already 21. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move him up to the uh, GCL Blue Jays. And we're going to reset that. And that puts Victor Mesia starting every game with Luis Bouillon. Uh, catching a little bit. Um, Mesia, so Stuart Barroa, he's already played uh, in, in Bluefield. Um, he's 21. Let's move him back to Bluefield. And really, there's not a lot of guys hitting particularly well who are getting a lot of at-bats. Angel Del Rosario is one of them. He's only 17, and he's off to a great start. Um, here we've got, he's only had eight plate appearances, Endry Garcia. He's not one of the starters. And he's also a really young guy at 17. Raquelvin De Castro. Now, he's a guy that we really want to take a look at because he was the biggest uh, bonus receiver in the international class of 2019. And De Castro, he's, he started off really slowly, but he's really turned it around now. Uh, 250, 351, 313. That's pretty much the... Um, the book on him, he's a good defender, but um, not a lot of pop right now. But we look at this guy here, Esteban Machado. He's a guy who was getting a lot more um, notice after the July 2nd signing uh, date, um, after they had a chance to get the, uh, the players into the Dominican Republic to what they call the Tricky League. That is a league that is sort of a non-official league. 
that um, they put all the players who signed in that season, so the 2019 July 2nd uh, signees, all go into the Tricky League, and they um, they play against each other, and, uh, and possibly even against some unsigned guys. Um, uh, but the but this is sort of like what the scouts kind of see, and and Ben Badler at Baseball America is a particularly good one, um, because he gets down there every year um, and really watches these players after they sign and really tracks their development. Um, and uh, he publishes a great article on Baseball America for that explains, you know, their developments and, and talking about the top. Um, bonus getters for each of the teams. So he writes those international reviews every season. I highly recommend them. And Estevan Machado here, he really got a lot of attention for his power, for his hitting ability. Not as polished defensively as, as De Castro, but uh, you can see how it's reflecting here in his production. He's you know, within his second week now, he's up to 314 with a 457 OBP and a little bit of power. And at this age, especially when they're just 17 years old, um, you don't expect a ton of power. But if they are generating doubles and the occasional home run, um, that's really good to see. So we see here he's got a 114 ISO, which is probably going to be among the highest on the team. The next highest is Wilder Perez here at 118. So, uh, yeah, that's the ISO. Um, so those are the two guys from a uh, hitting perspective. Robert Robertus is another guy who got uh, some fairly good uh, press as a hitter. He is one for, uh, he is 400 hit with uh, in 10 at bats. So we'll see what happens with these guys. We're going to track them. Pitching wise, there aren't a ton of guys here who are really projected to be outstanding. Roddy Sanchez has been doing the best so far, but he still has a 917 ERA. I'm mainly looking here at the walk to strikeout ratios. Um, in the Dominican Summer League, you see a lot of guys with really crazy walk numbers. So you see here Jefferson Herrera. He's a little bit older. I'm going to move him up to uh, the GCL. Um, but he had a pretty favorable uh, ratio of walks to strikeouts. Yet another guy with a good ratio is Yonelvi or Yonivi Polina. Uh, Polonia, sorry. Um, he's got off to a great start. I'm going to keep him here for the time being. He's just 18. And Junior Lara is just 19. He also is uh, not a bad ratio, but four walks in five innings is not great. So let's take a quick look at the Vancouver Canadians. We've already talked about the hitters a little bit. We'll go back to them. Gabriel Ponce is, uh, had the best start of anybody, but Brandon Isert, who was a draft pick last year who never got into any games because of an injury, um, he had eight strikeouts in six innings, so that was pretty nice. Jimmy Robbins, not a great start. Sam Ryan, Ryan not a great start. Antonio Saldana, he was okay. Concepcion, we've talked about. Uh, Havacost, we've talked about. And that's pretty much it. So on the on the hitting side, you know, Philip Clark, who started the year in Lansing, really didn't hit anything. He is off to a great start in four games with the Vancouver Canadians. Ryan Sloniger had a great offensive season last year, and he is also, you know, had a, had a good game to begin with. Scotty Bradley here, 444, 565, 833 in just, you know, 23 at-bats. That's pretty outstanding. Uh, Nick Gonzalez, our first round draft pick, 375, 375, 500. Leonardo Jimenez is a defensive first uh, infielder, probably going to be a second baseman or shortstop. Um, as you can see, defense is 65 for second. He actually is a very good shortstop, and his defensive uh, defensive stats here are good. He's not projected to have a ton of power, but he is a guy who can stick at shortstop, unlike... Uh, Miguel Geraldo, who doesn't have as good defensive uh, numbers, but his offensive stats are pretty good. Now, the OSA sees more of him, and he's got a pretty good um, offensive profile in real life. Davis Schneider, off to a great start. Um, you know, five, he's hitting 500 in five games, so that's great to see. DJ Daniels not getting a lot of playing time. Adrian Ramos was a uh, non-drafted free agent. He was in Vancouver last year as well. And uh, that's our Vancouver team. For Lansing, 
this. Again, we're seeing a lot of the same names over and over when we talk about who is really doing well. Trevor Schwecki has really started to come on. Um, more offensive, uh, more OBP than necessarily power. Um, the Gregory Contreras, he's putting together a nice offensive season after a really bad year last year, both with Lansing and Vancouver. Cameron Eden is back in the lineup. He's, I think, been a little sluggish since he returned, but, you know, it's not surprising. And Eric Rivera, he was also a guy who was drafted last year, played very well in Bluefield. He's off to a great start with Lansing since he's joined the team. On the mound, um, you know, Kloffenstein has been very mixed this year in uh in this game, Juan Nunez has been quite strong. The walks are a little high, so I'd like to see him bring the walks down over the course of the season. Going up to um, Dunedin, again, the same guys. Pitching-wise, Elvis Luciano here, 32 strikeouts in 22 innings. I may give him another couple weeks down here and then send him back to uh, AA and see how he handles that. Alec Manoa, again, those walks are very high. 48 strikeouts is, is not bad, and I think the strikeout ratio is definitely coming up. Graham Spraker, solid work all year. He definitely deserves a promotion. I'm not sure if there's the room for him just yet. Um, we may make um, a little change, actually, and I think I'm going to do that today. I just want to highlight Justin Maiesi. The strikeout numbers are down, but he's always been a ground ball pitcher. Um, in fact, I'm going to move him up to double A. And there is a guy in double A that I've been concerned about, and I'm going to demote him, and that's Maximo Castillo. Castillo has really been giving up a lot of runs, and so I'm going to send him back to Dunedin. And we will just ask our manager, and he puts Graham Spraker right into that rotation. Um, and I do want Joey Murray in the rotation, so I'm actually going to set his game strategy to being a starter. I think Murray is a starter, and that's going to bump um, Sean Weimer out of the rotation. And I think, you know, given how well he did in Dunedin in, in a closer's role, I think that's going to be a good move for him. All right, we're going to just head back to Dunedin and take a look at the lineups. Um, again, you know, Gabriel Moreno is a bit lower than league average. Jake Brode has been doing really well lately. Seven home runs. That leads the team. Uh, sorry, that's second on the team. Samad Taylor has cooled off, but he's still got a 155 OPS plus. And Chavez Young had a, a rougher week, and he's down to a 116 for OPS plus. Moving to New Hampshire, you know, we got some better stuff here this week. I mean, if you look at Alejandro Kirk, you kind of ask yourself, well, what did he really do this week? He hit a home run. He had a couple games, but his OPS is now 129, and I think it was 125 last week and 123 fairly consistently for a couple of weeks. He's just, he's taking walks. He's got 33 walks, 36 strikeouts. 353 OBP, and he's hitting doubles and home runs and triples here um, for a 230 ISO, which is tops on the team. So he's not doing it in a loud way, but he is really handling this pitching really well. And again, if we look at him, he's a little tired right now. So Mac Jones may get uh, a little more off, a little more chance. Um, Matt Jones. I did not want to look at Matt Jones. I wanted to look at Alejandro Kirk. So the batting average is a little low right now at 240. It's not, I don't think that's going to be a problem because we have still a, a lot of improvement to be done here with his um, contact ability as well as his eye. So I think that even as he gets better, and he's still, what, 21? He's still just 21. So as he improves, we are definitely going to see um, him keep up with the competition, I think. As long as he is improving that contact ability and his his eye, I think we are going to see him keep up with the the um, with the com competition level as he gets promoted. Um, Ryan Noda has um, crossed the 100 strikeout. 
threshold already. He does have 60 walks, and he does have a 340 OBP, but that 276 slugging percentage is rather on the low side, and a lot of that comes from the batting average. But a 116 ISO is definitely not characteristic for him. Um, Kevin Smith, again, falling back a little bit. He's below average now compared to the league. Josh Palacios is above average compared to the league, and so is Brock Lundquist. On the pitching side, we've already made that move to send uh, Maximo Castillo down to the minors, and Josh Winkowski has been, you know, having mixed results here. Joey Murray has been outstanding, so that's why I want to keep him in the rotation. Uh, Patrick Murphy is scheduled to start our next game. Um, Sopko has been a little cold, and you can see the little uh, chili uh, icon here. He's in a slump. Um, Danny Jimenez, two games since coming back to the Blue Jays organization, and yeah, he's been quite good um, so far. We'll see how he continues to be. Uh, definitely more potential here on the stuff, and he's going to need to get control to be a major leaguer, but um, that's definitely a major league profile, the way things have been working uh, so far. And we'll go up to Buffalo. Um, on the pitching side, you know, I've moved... Um, I've moved uh, our good friend Jacob Wagaspak back up to Toronto since the injury to Hyunjin Ryu. Uh, Ty Tice, not a lot of work this week. Um, still struggling a little bit overall after a strong start. Taylor Sacedo has been pretty solid. Uh, Hector Perez, very good in that relief role. Julian Weather, Merriweather has been much better in a relief role than a starting role. Connor Fisk, 0.84 ERA. He has been outstanding. And he's the type of guy, he's 28. He's never been in the majors. He's been in Buffalo for three years at the AAA level. He is a guy that I am going to look for an opportunity. When we have room on the 40 man, if I can move somebody to the... Um, if I can move somebody to the 60-day injured list or um, if we have an opening, I'm going to give Connor a shot maybe in September um, because I think he has just been lights out so far this year and really in a difficult role coming in uh, when the starter has some trouble and doing a really outstanding job in long relief. So he is a guy, and that's the other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make uh, Curtis Taylor a reliever. Um, for sure. We're going to force roll reliever and we'll see who goes into the rotation. And it's going to be Connor Fisk. I had a feeling that would happen, that Fisk would be rewarded for his great work so far this year um, by going into the rotation when I moved uh, Curtis Taylor back into a, a bullpen role. And then we'll just take a look at the Blue Jays. Uh, we also need to look at the hitters. Uh, Riley Adams is really struggling. Andy Burns is really having a great season. Uh, he's a favorite of mine. I've talked to him a few times, and the last time I interviewed him was uh, after he had uh, announced that he had signed with the Blue Jays after playing for two years in Korea. So he is, and that's that two-year gap, 2017-2018. He went over, played a ton of second base in Korea. Um Great, great to see him doing well. Uh, Santiago Espinal has really fallen off. Uh, I think for him, it's the lack of power. That's what's really going to hold him back. While Ruben Tejada, 95 OPS. Jonathan Davis, uh, 95 OPS plus. Uh, Roman Fields. Anthony Alford is starting to come around. Um, 191 batting average. That was down in the low 100s a couple of weeks ago. And he, I can remember a 23 OPS plus from him. So he's bringing that back up. He's really finding his groove. He's got a couple home runs now recently. And I think, you know, by, you know, give him a couple more months of solid hitting, he might be in consideration for a promotion if the Jays need a, an outfielder. Kivlahan here, his, he's just doing what he did last year. 16 home runs, leading the club. He hit like in the 20s last year. And if you look at overall last year, he was with Indianapolis and New Hampshire as well. He did hit over 30 home runs in the minor leagues last year. And let's go back up to Toronto. So here with the Blue Jays, uh, Derek Fisher, red hot. He had a great week. So did Vladdy Jr. Vladdy Jr. is up to a 932 OPS. Um, just stinging the ball just you know he's got 3.3 war and that is actually leading the team his war let's just take a look maybe his defensive stats are helping him out he's got a negative zr uh, range factor is pretty low 
efficiency is 991, which is not bad. And efficiency is like um, how many balls hit your way are you getting outs on? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure of how it's calculated. I think I used to know and I've probably forgotten. Um, but he is really putting together some nice numbers here, a 3.3 war already. We're only, you know, he's only played 77 games this year. Um, the other guy who's really coming on is Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette is now in the positives. He was below that 100 uh, OPS plus for a while. Lourdes Gurriel is at 117. So this whole offense is really firing. Danny Jansen's in a bit of a slump, though. Um, and our catchers are not generating a ton offensively, but you can see he's got a plus war, uh, plus war, so that's um, really useful. And Sean Telez, 1 and 1.5, so not bad. Telez, again, is giving you that value very cheaply. And Shaw, not doing what he did before his struggles last year in Milwaukee, but um, he's close to comparable here with, you know, he's he's a little bit off, but he's he could be doing stuff comparable to what he did in 2018. And on the mound, we've had a lot of injuries, and so we've seen a lot of interesting things happening. A lot of guys um, going in and out of the rotation. So Ryan Barucki went into the rotation after Sean Reed Foley went on to the injured list. And then uh, uh, Anthony Kay came off the injured list, and so we sent Waggis back down, Barucki back to the bullpen, and Kay to the rotation. And then Hyunjin Ryu got injured and uh we've moved trent thornton into the rotation and jacob wagaspak has come into um come into the into the major league team back again from the minors and he is in a long relief role and barucki's back into the bullpen i i figured i wanted to keep barucki in the bullpen for a little bit but we will see what happens with him. And that is sort of what's going on. The pitching staff has been very fluid with a lot of injuries lately. So it's great to see our first round pick, Nick Gonzalez, you know, have such a great start to his pro career. Um, and here we are, we are approaching uh, the end of June. So that means in the next couple of Sims, we're going to have the international uh, free agents, um, very unrealistic uh, international free agents the way it works in this game mainly because um it's an open bidding right away but you know in real life these guys have been scouted um for years and usually most of the top guys have agreements with major league teams well before they sign and they're eligible to sign so um very not realistic here so Here's a look at our leaderboard. Hyunjin Ryu is our, our ERA leader. I don't think uh, uh, I don't think Nate Pearson has enough innings to really qualify. Um, our our rotation setting up with Pearson, K, and then Thornton in the next three games. Uh, we have three games against Milwaukee um, coming up. Um, Kevin Biggio is not having a great time, but we are getting Drury and Panic in a little bit more. Bo Bichette is really taking off. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. is leading the team in batting average and home runs and RBI. Uh, really our top hitter, and he's really rounding into form as he finds his feet. Uh, Derek Fisher, again, he's been a nice surprise for the Jays this year. And Randall Grichuk, that batting average is on the slide, but he is still hitting with some power. As you can see, we have... In the, in the lineup, in the regular lineup, we have seven guys with more than 10 home runs. In fact, 12 is the lowest. Um, so, you know, we are really closing in with the possibility of seven guys with 20 home run seasons. Um, it's pretty impressive to see. Just a ton of power. And if the pitching can hold off teams, that power is really going to come through. We can also see here in the stats, we are two and a half games up on the wild card. We are inching inching closer to the Tampa Bay Rays. We I think at one point we're 15 and a half behind. We're now 12 and a half behind. But in that wild card spot, we have that second position. Uh, we're in there four games behind Houston for the first one and two and a half games up on Cleveland for the uh the third or the, the first non wildcard position. So 
And that's that week. It was a really strong week overall. We had a great week from the Blue Jays, a great week from the Buffalo Bisons. Um, great to see the Vancouver Canadians get started. And next sim, we're going to see the other short season leagues get underway, the Appalachian League and the uh, Gulf Coast League. And we're going to start to see some of those players and our recently drafted players in action for the first time. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks a lot. I am Jay Blue, bluejaysfromaway.com, at jaysfromaway on Twitter. You can find the 2020 Toronto Blue Jays Minor League Handbook um, on the Blue Jays From Away website. You can find it on Amazon in both print and Kindle format. And thanks to GM Games for hosting us here. That's all for today. Have a great day.